Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Shinji Hayashi from Kobe University in Japan. So first of all, I'd like to express my sincere thanks to the president of this university, Professor Seifer, for inviting me to this wonderful conference. And I also would like to thank all the members in the organizing committee and program committee uh, who made it possible to attend this conference. So, uh, even though I didn't understand the Russian taught in an opening speech, I feel already the great passion and great enthusiasm to invent something to develop a new technology and new sciences. So, let me begin my talk about uh, fun resonance now. So I'm from Kobe. Probably you have no idea about Kobe. And I didn't have no idea about Samara. But when arriving here, as someone told, it's a really hospital, hospital city and atmosphere, very calm compared to Moscow and St. Petersburg. And I like, like this region very much. So to give you an idea, Kobe sorry, is located somewhere around here, and I fly, I took flight, something like that. But in reality, it was not like this. I took three different connecting flights, just from Osaka to Shanghai, Shanghai, Moscow, Moscow, Shanghai. So it took me 30 hours from my home to the hotel here. And uh, probably you know Kyoto and Tokyo. Tokyo is uh, the uh, modern capital, but Kyoto is the Asian art capital in Japan. But Kobe is located near Kyoto, only 60, 70 kilometers. And uh, I'm belonging to the Kobe University. It's not too big, not too small university, but uh, this number of faculties and graduate school. Uh, number of students is something like this, and staff, teaching staff is something like this. And I took this picture in my campus. This was at the beginning of April. We had the so-called sakura, that is a cherry tree. And normally at the end of March and the beginning of April, will, uh, the cherry tree blooms and like this. And everywhere, where, everywhere in Japan we find this kind of tree. But it's not for eating, just to looking. So this is a photo of my campus. And Kobe is located near to the sea and not near to the mountain. So this is just a view from my campus. But here you will find the, the port. And Kobe is rather a cosmopolitan city where there are many foreigners living for do, do some trading also, because this is a, we have a port. So, uh, let me talk about my youth. When I was young, I want to talk about my first uh, encounter with the uh, final resonance. That is the, the main subject of my talk today. Uh, when I was young, probably 45 years ago, I was a student, PhD student at University of Paris, uh, University of Paris, University of Pierre Marie Curie. So if you visit Paris, you will find metro station named Jussieu. And in, in front of the metro station, you will find tall building down like this. This belongs to the uh, University of Paris 6. Huh? So, Inside, you will find uh, buildings like this, um, but it's renewed, it's reconstructed. So when I was in Paris, it was not like this, but uh, it's rather new one. But I have been working in a uh, uh, laboratory which is located underground here. And at that time, because I am, uh, my specialty was a solid state physics. So I have been doing Raman spectroscopy of semiconductors in the University of Paris. And at that time, I met for the first time the Fadun resonance. Uh, 
it was not my subject of research, but uh, one of my colleagues in a laboratory gave a seminar and he told about uh, this kind of phenomena in Raman scattering. So this is a Raman scattering spectrum of uh, uh, silicon, crystalline silicon. And in a Raman spectrum, I have not enough time to explain what is a Raman spectroscopy, but uh, just to give you an image, uh, in solid state of silicon, you have the lattice vibration, which means the uh, vibration of atoms around the equilibrium point, which propagates like a wave. And then if you shine a laser, then you observe the scattered light. Then if you analyze the spectrum, you can find this strong peak like this. That, is, that corresponds, uh, the energy of the peak corresponds to the energy of vibration. That is a Raman spectroscopy. And normally, if you have intrinsic silicon, you have very intense Raman spectrum and symmetric line shape. But if you dope with impurity atoms, in this case boron atom, then the spectral shape is uh, modified and it becomes more and more asymmetric as you increase number of uh, boron atom like this. So finally, this part is some, looks like something like this, and it's not symmetric. It's a symmetric li line shape, and it is called uh, funnel line shape. And I don't want to enter into the detail, but normally, if you have only phonon lattice vibration Raman scattering, it's symmetric. But if you dope with impurity atoms, you will have the free electrons or free, uh, not free, but uh, not always free, but you have the electrons which contribute to the right light scattering. And then uh, there is a uh, mixing or uh, interference between electronic Raman and the phonon Raman. Then it gives you asymmetric line shape. But when I was in his seminar, I didn't understand nothing. I understand nothing at all because it was not my subject, but I was just looking at this picture. Oh, it's funnel. That was my first experience. And my second uh, encounter with the funnel resonance is about 10 years ago. That was in my laboratory. It's a kind of nanotechnology. So in my laboratory, my colleagues were working on uh, silicon nanowire like this. The diameter is something like 100 nanometer, and the length is 20 micrometer. But by using modern Raman technology, you can measure the spectrum for one micrometer spot. So you can trace the Raman uh, with one micron step. So you can change the spot and take the Raman spectrum like this. But this particular na silicon nanowire, and half of this is uh, doped with impurity. The other is not doped, that is intrinsic. So if you change the position uh, until here, you have the symmetric line shape. But if you enter into the doped region, the line shape is changed, changes and becoming uh, asymmetric, asymmetric. So, and if you uh, heat this nanowire, the impurities atoms goes up also. So this becomes also doped. So you can trace uh, from the beginning, you find asymmetric line shape like this. So it is a good way to know uh, if this part is doped or not doped. And also by analyzing the line shape using funnel function, which is written here, simple equation, and just to know in the parameter, uh, the, the parameter gives you the some uh, way of estimation of the uh, dopant concentration. That is the application of Raman in funnel line shape. And this field is still the active field, and I'm just putting a paper coming from a Russian uh, laboratory, Novosibirsk, and uh, it was published in 2018, so it's still an active field for nanotechnology. They are talking about nanodiamond doped with impurity. 
So now let me go back to the beginning of the last century, so the beginning of Fano uh, resonance. Uh, when I wrote my uh, review paper on plasmonics, I put it, uh, visit the past to know the future, but I was taken from so-called uh, uh, Confucius, from Confucianism, that is a kind of philosophy, very, very old philosophy in China. And in Japan, we share a lot of things, uh, cultural things, a lot of things with China. Everything comes from China. And uh, this saying is first written by Kon Zi. And this, this term is very well known in, in Japan. So I'd like to go back to the, the, the beginning of the final resonance. So this is Ugo Fano, that is a big scientist uh, who started the Fano resonance. But at his time, it was well known that the, in atomic absorption st spectra, some kind of asymmetric line shape, this kind of line shape had been well, very well known. But problem was how to uh, explain theory theoretically how to interpret this uh, uh, asymmetric line set. So in 1935, he wrote a seminal paper, and this is in Italian. And uh, according to his theory, the final resonance is created as asymmetric line sh shape is created by the interference between a discrete state and continuum state. Just for atomic case, discrete state corresponds to so-called auto-ionization state, and continu continuum corresponds to just ionization state. So if you have a mixing of wave function, uh, that is a quantum mechanics, uh, you can produce the uh, asymmet line shape, and this is uh, explained like this. And Hugo Fano derived very simple function to describe this uh, uh, asymmetric line shape like this. So initial paper was in 1935, but 61 he rewrote the theory, he reformulated, and his paper written in 16 has now more than 8,000 citations according to the wave of science. Okay, so what was very much interesting for him at the end of his seminal paper he wrote some acknowledgement to Professor Enrico Fermi because he was a PhD student of Enrico Fermi. And for me, it was by chance. Not only Ugo Fano, I encountered Enrico Fermi in Roma about five years ago when I attended the conference in the southern part of Italy. I spent one day in Rome and uh, this university was very close to my hotel. It was not in my schedule, but I made some promenade around my hotel. But by chance, I found this uh, Sp Sapienza University. And I entered in the university. I found this building. And if I turn to the right, you find this uh, department of physics. And just entering inside the department, building, you find on the right-hand side this kind of uh, very small museum. And on top, you find this Enrico Fermi. So this is the laboratory. Uh, this is the place where Enrico Fermi was working at that time. And this is a kind of very s small. So it was also my first encounter with Enrico Fermi. And that was very much interesting for me that Yesterday morning, I had a chance to talk to uh, uh, president of the, this university, Professor Soifer. Uh, he told me that. He knows that uh, there are another Fermi, well known in computer science. And I don't know if someone here know or not, but before coming here, before meeting, the president of this university. I didn't know that his brother at all. So it was very much surprising. I feel some connection and a connection between Fermi, brother of Fermi, Enrico Fermi, and me. 
So nowadays, uh, over the past 10 years, what is interesting in f the field of plasmonics and nanostructures, there have been a lot, lot of work done to realize the final resonance in this kind of uh, plasmonic nanostructure or all dielectric nanostructures. I don't want to enter into the detail, but in these systems, uh, so-called bright mode and dark mode, uh, uh, the people can manage to create the bright mode with broad resonance, uh, dark mode with sharp resonance. And if you can succeed to couple the, the, them, then the final light shape can, can be observed. No, usually the final resonance is observed in the scattering, transmission, or uh, absorption, uh, reflection spectrum. So, now, I, I'd like to talk about my, about my third encounter with final resonance. It's very recent. Uh, I had a chance to stay in Morocco from uh, 13 to 15, and uh, probably to give you an idea, Morocco. So it's still far. Uh, Morocco is located at the uh, uh, east north of Africa, and we say that Japan is the country where the sun rises, but. In Morocco, in Arabic language, they call Al-Maghrib. Al-Maghrib means the sun set. So I went from the country where the sun sets to the country where the sun, uh, ah, sorry, sun rises. So to the countries where the country where the sun set. And uh, my laboratory was located in the capital, Rabat. And in the, in, in the city of Rabat, you will find some building like this. And this is a laboratory. If you enter into the building, this is a laboratory, so-called Moroccan Foundation for Advanced Science Innovation Research, Masir. And they have a lot of facility like this. And this is the photo that I took in my laboratory with my uh, Moroccan colleagues. And uh, what was also very much interesting was that where there I find my colleague Dimitri Nestrenko, who is sitting here now over there. And uh, I was working also Moroccan professor Zuhair Scott. So this is a photo which proves that I was working in Morocco. So it's OK. So in my laboratory, that was a laboratory op optics photonic center. They were trying to uh, create uh, work with surface plasma resonance sensor. So what is surface plasma resonance? Uh, if you have the metal, the surface, uh, normally noble metals, you have a lot of free electrons. You, you can expect to have some kind of surface waves of electrons localized at surface, but since the electrons are charged negatively, if there is an oscillation of electrons, you can expect to have also oscillation of electromagnetic uh, uh, waves. So this can be called uh, electromagnetic wave, transverse magnetic wave, uh, combined oscillation of electrons and electromagnetic wave and localized at surface. And normally, just sending a light to, on, on a surface, you cannot observe the surface plasma resonance. But uh, we, if you put prism, it is possible to observe it. And just uh, if you do this experiment with a prism, uh, if you change the angle of incidence, Above the angle of critical angle of total reflection, your reflectivity here is goes stays one total reflection. But if you put very thin film of silver or gold, 
then you can excite the so-called surface plasma polarity mode, and then uh, instant energy incident goes to this excitation, and you will have the shoot in the reflectivity. So this is well-known uh, surface plasma uh, resonance in Kretschmann configuration. And at this angle of uh, energy transfer, you will have a huge electric field localized at surface of uh, at this. So this can be applied to detect some molecules and something like this to enhance the optical signal also. So this is just a physical explanation. If there is a phase matching condition between in incident light through prism and surface plasma, you can achieve the excitation of surface plasma. Um, so around 1990, there has been a uh, company named BioCore. It's now General Electric Healthcare, but they developed a machine, commercially available machine, for the biosensing using the uh, surface plasma resonance. So you can uh, functionalize the metallic surface to put uh, some uh, uh, antibody. And if you catch antigen or some antibody antigen, or uh, if some molecule, biomolecule attached to the surface, the resonance shift. So detecting the shift of angle or detecting the a change in intensity, you can uh, easily detect the attachment or detachment of the molecules. So that is the principle of, of biosensor, SPR biosensor. But, I'm sorry. It's OK. Uh, in, in my laboratory, the people have, were trying to improve the sensitivity by changing the structures. And there have been several attempts to narrow, to make narrower the, the resonance because uh, the sensitivity increases when the width becomes narrower. Uh, several different structures have been proposed, but particularly uh, what was interesting, a metal insulator metal structure, something like this. And one day, my colleague Dimitri gave me a paper uh, published by a Korean group and he, they were talking about uh, sensing with uh, bimetal or metal insulator metal in sensing medium. And if you use a conventional structure, the resonance, surface plasma resonance, very broad, something like that. But we are calling this kimchi sensor because this was published by Korean group. Uh, if you uh, create kimchi, kimchi sensor, if you work with kimchi sensor, the width of the resonance becomes much sharper. And with this sharpening, you can increase the sensitivity of detection by one order of magnitude, something like that. So at that time, I was analyzing, analyzing. I, I was trying to do some numerical calculation, but uh, occasionally uh, on this date, that was a uh, it's written a little bit in French word, but on the 16th December 13, uh, I, I found, I encountered for the third time the final resonance by simulation. And at that time, I was already thinking about the submission paper for the Meta 14 conference. So that was the, the deadline was uh, the next month, uh, 15 January. And what I was doing, instead of uh, putting metal, dialect metal, but I put it here, high index dialect, and did my simulation. The, the real structure is something like this. And for this structure, according to my uh, simulation, if you don't have the second dialect, high uh, index dialect layer, you have only broad SPP resonance. But if you put the second uh, layer, directly layer, you can create this kind of uh, asymmetric. This one is called so-called E, electromagnetic induced transparency. But as you see here, you see here, uh, we can create very, very sharp final resonance. That was my uh, encountering, fourth encountering of final resonance in Morocco. 
So according to our simulation, for this angle, you have the uh, surface plasma resonance. And for around this resonance, you have the waveguide mode resonance. So the final resonance, this kind of asymmetric line shape is created by the interaction between the surface plasma polariton and the waveguide mode supported by high index dielectric layer. So according to our simulation, the sensitivity can be improved uh, by order of 10 to the 3 or something like that. Uh, because, for example, just using uh, normal conventional surface plasma resonance and changing the refractive index of surrounding medium, you have this kind of change in the spectrum. But uh, with our structure, uh, just changing the uh, refractive index, index of surrounding medium, 10 to the minus 5, uh, we can create uh, the same order of magnitude of the difference in uh, reflectivity. So we are calling this is the sensitivity by intensity and the figure of merit. We calculated that with Dimitri and uh, we found something uh, increase in the figure of merit of sensing 10 to the threefold enhancement. And Dimitri did a uh, lot of calculation about this. And uh, even for normally surface plasma polariton is excited by p-polarized light. But it can be used also for s-polarized light. And he did a lot of calculation. So it depends on the parameters. But what is important is there is some optimum uh, condition for figure of merit. And sometimes uh, figure of merit uh, increases uh, 10 to the 6. So it depends on the parameter. But it's sure that to this structure gives you much higher sensitivity than conventional SPR sensor. And also, uh, we can expect to have a huge enhancement in the electric field, which can be applied to enhance, for example, Raman scattering of molecules attached to the surface. That is uh, so-called surface enhanced Raman scattering. And we can also do something with second harmonic generation. So generally speaking, multiple multi-layer systems, something like this, uh, nothing new and nothing particular. We can uh, calculate uh, optical response easily using standard uh, uh, electromagnetic theories. But if we work in attenuate total reflection, uh, transmission is zero, which means that just uh, information of R gives you information of absorber, absorption inside the structure. So we have found a lot of funnel for a variety of multilayer structures. And the simplest one is just SPR. Because normally, in the past, uh, this kind of, uh, it is converted, but uh, this shows the absorption instead of the shoot of reflectance. But normally this kind of line shape has been uh, analyzed using Lorentzian symmetric function. That was the custom. But we tried to fit with the asymmetric function. The fitting works very well, which means that uh, uh, this kind of uh, simple SPP line shape is already fun. And Dimitri uh, worked with this problem, and he published a paper with couple mode theory analysis regarding to this problem, just simple SPP. And uh, in Morocco, I started by simulation, but I did also the experiment and using uh, organic uh, layers. And this is my first observation, experimental observation of final resonance using organic layer deposited on silver film. It works very well. And this is the metal dielectric, dielect, dielect MDDD structure. And we did experiments also for inorganic multilayer systems also using aluminum. And we could achieve a very, very sharp final resonance. Uh, 
as I told you, this is already just simple SPP excitation in the funnel. So we have the funnel on funnel, so we can say this is a double funnel, double funnel resonance. And we could do similar thing, not using metal. Metal sometimes causes problems because of uh, loss caused by ohmic loss. And in the performance of the sensors, uh, some devices are limited because of the intrinsic loss of metal. But it is to overcome the, that problem, we can use a uh, low loss dielectric layer. So we try to do with all DDDDD structure, and one here and one here. These are two waveguide layer which support a broad waveguide mode and sharp waveguide mode. And by doing the interference or by uh, coupling these, we can achieve this kind of fun resonance again. So this is an uh, experimental demonstration of tunability or controllability of funnel resonance by just playing, playing with the uh, thickness of the first waveguide layer. We can uh, change dramatically. Okay. We can dramatically change the line shape like this and like this, and it works both for polarization and polarization. And what is good, it, it's not perfect, but uh, we can uh, predict the behavior of resonance using so-called coupled oscillator model. And uh, as you, it's very easy. Th these are the equations we are using. So just classic oscillators coupled with each other. Then we could prove that there is a close correspondence between electromagnetic system and harmonic oscillator, classical harmonic oscillator system. And if you treat, if you play with harmonic oscillator model, it is very easy to predict uh, how the resonance changes depending on the position of the two oscillator and dumping constant of oscillator and the strength of coupling strength between the two oscillators. So this is the last uh, topic I will uh, give you for this talk. So now we are a little bit changing uh, the structure. So that is, uh, in this case, for the second waveguide layer, we doped with the photofunctional molecule. This, that is the dispersed red one. And uh, dispersed red one is sensitive to the light irradiation. You can change the absorption, and you can change also the reflective index of uh, uh, this one is the PMMA polymer film doped with this uh, dispersed red one molecules. So this layer can be modified by pump light, by external pump light. So we did so-called probe and pump, probe, pump and probe measurement for ATR. So while monitoring the resonance uh, like this, we shine the sample with a blue light. Then optical pumping. Uh, produces transist isomerization of DR DR1 that is changed the, 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 the form of molecule changes. And then that isomerization uh, it induces the change in the refractive index. And finally, uh, this change induces a shift of funnel resonance. So this is the, our experimental result for both polarization of pumping. You can uh, shift uh, this resonance. This is a light tuning of uh, fun resonance. And just combining with the result of si simulation, you can convert the shift in a di uh, angle uh, to the, shi the change in the reflective index of the di-doped polymer layer. And uh, we can detect 
this is caused by 10 to the minus 3, order of 10 to the minus 3. So I've shown that uh, sharp final resonance are successfully observed in a variety of multilayer structures, and including metal dielectric, and metal dielectric, and all dielectric structures. And uh, control is very easy, and we c we can achieve high Q final resonance, which means high uh, Q uh, high performance in sensing and optical switches and, and enhanced spectroscopy. So what we are now trying to do is. Just like in the last slide, uh, we are trying to combine the final structure with the photofunctional molecules, not only just one type of molecule, but variety of mo molecules. Uh, for example, fluorescent molecule, and realize for the fluorescent final resonance or something like that. So finally, we would like to develop some fo photofunctional final resonance and develop some new kind of devices. So finally, I'd like to uh, thank my co collaborators. These are my students in Kobe student, uh, Kobe universities. And this is uh, Professor Mino Fuji, who is now guiding the laboratory in Kobe University. So this is Dr. Dimitri sitting here and Professor Scott uh, at, in Morocco. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Dear professor, thank you very much for your interesting presentation and uh, in partially the uh, description of the results by Dmitry Nesterenko. I hope it is uh, important for the future uh, defense of Dmitry uh, Я надеюсь, что то, что профессор отметил результаты Дмитрия Нестеренко, послужит скорейшему оформлению Дмитрием его докторской диссертации и успешной защиты. Дим, давай, мы тебя ждем. Спасибо. Please, questions? Сергей Павлович, пожалуйста, используйте микрофон. А, у вас есть микрофон, да, Сереж? Спасибо вам за вашу хорошую беседу. Но, you have shown uh, in few examples uh, different uh, metal materials for sensing. Last uh, topic was with silver. Why not gold? So what is it? well? I know the difference is what is the difference. However, gold is better in my view. Mm -hmm. However, you have some uh, shown sometimes uh, silver. Yes, so yes. What, uh, why yes. and uh, yes. what is the reason? For me, silver and gold is not uh, it's not a big difference for fundamental research. And for uh, fundamental but, but research... For plasmonics, for plasmonics. Yes. yes, normally, but for example, for the stability, for, for, for the environment, it will be good using uh, gold. But normally the loss, uh, ohmic loss is higher for gold. So you have only broader. So if you want to have sharper resonance, it's better to use mm. silver. But gold resists, uh, it's not damaged. But silver is easily damaged. That is a problem. So for application, it's better to use uh, gold. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But for, for research, it's uh, the same. Yes, yes. I would say. Thank you. Пожалуйста, еще вопрос. Подходите к микрофону, пожалуйста. Hello, uh, my name is Miroslav. I'm a student of Samaria University. It's not working. OK, uh, so my question is, uh, what was the overall thickness of multi layers that you used in your experiment? Uh -huh. Okay, probably I hope that I can find some example. For example, yes, in this case, uh, this is a spacer layer, and this is 400, 400 nanometer, and this is a waveguide layer, and this is nine. So in total, uh, a little bit, one micrometer or something. Yes. Yes. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Does it mean that this kind of final resonance we can use to create optical switch with yes. very uh, small thickness? And mm. for example, my field of interest is the solar cell. Mm. And I'm curious, can I use this technology to create uh, optical switches and in a solar cell? Do you know the solar cell? Mm, yes. Uh, 
uh, it may be possible, but uh, to realize re rather uh, realistic uh, technologies, you know, probably you have to optimize every parameter. Uh, I don't know exactly. Probably, in principle, it would be possible. Mm, for the moment, we are working with the prism, but uh, mm, prism is not uh, suited for miniaturization of uh, the structure. And uh, in case of, uh, mm, if you use a uh, metallic layer and also conductive uh, dielectric layer, there exists some oxide are conductive then you can create some uh, electronic elements also. And you can probably introduce a final resin in such kind of, but just it's a kind of idea. So to realize, probably you have to work uh, very hard. So mm -hmm. it's possible to research it. But that may be uh, one good direction to do. Oh. Okay. Thank you very much. К микрофону подойдите, пожалуйста. Ведет запись же и трансляция в другой зал. I'm sorry, I don't hear very well. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, my first question is about the what what about the term of uh, scattering in the uh, you you considered reflectance and absorbance uh, is there any uh, scattering terms in optical spectroscopy? Ah, so you are asking me uh, is there any scattering which bothers us uh, for the measure? But scattering in this kind of structure depends on the surface. Graph. So if you have some inhomogeneity in the bulk, you will have the, the problems. But in our case, yes, of course, there are some scattering loss, but uh, the order of magnitude of the scattered intensity is something like 10 to the minus 5 compared to the reflection, reflected light. So in our case, we can neglect the contribution of scattering. Is that okay? You, uh, in very t thin layers, maybe we have observed the quantum size effect or mm. quantum uh, confinement effect of charge carriers. Uh -huh. So uh, your theory I is uh, just electromagnetic mm. theory. Do you have uh, some but quantum mechanical? Mm. But still our thickness of the layers are thick enough to neglect the quantum size effect. To have the quantum size effect, I believe that uh, you have to go down to at least 10 nanometer or less than 10 nanometers, s a few nanometer. Then you will have some effect of quantum size effect. But f in our case, we don't have. It's very thick. For surface plasma resonance in quantum mechanics, mm. yes? Pardon, I didn't is, is there any, any uh, theory? Your theory just on the base of electromagnetism, yeah? Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, in general, in a community of surface plasma or plasmonics, there are already many, pa lot of papers talking about quantum, uh, quantum plasmonics, yeah. Because it's a problem a little bit delicate. For example, if you have two metallic s sphere, for metallic particle, and if you approach the approach, approaches, there is some electrons which turn off. It's a quantum effect. So you, if you can neglect or not neglect, you cannot neglect, it depends on the size of particle and the distance between the particle. So in some regime, it's a quantum, quantum mechanical effect is very important in plasma. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.